Ripper Demons can be one of the most difficult Slayer creatures inside of the game, but what if I told you that I have a method that you can even AFK them while making insane GP? So if that excites you, make sure to stay tuned. Let's dive in. And of course, we are going to be making binding contracts by killing the Ripper Demons. As for the requirements, the requirements are going to be super high because these things hit like a truck and they have a mechanic that can one shot you if you do not deal with them fast enough. So for the requirements, you're going to need 96 Slayer so you can actually damage the Ripper Demons just by requirements. 96 Summoning so you can capture the souls inside of the binding contracts. You're also going to want 90 plus combat to be able to actually deal with the Ripper Demons fast enough before they actually do their one shot mechanic. So higher combat, the better of course. 96 Herbler so you can have your Elder Overload salves. You want that prayer renewal as much as often. 95 Prayer and the Temple Acid Test and Quest completed so you can use your Ancient Curses because Deflect Melee is crucial for this AFK method. 68 Archaeology and the Dagon by Mystery completed so you can make your binding contracts. And finally, your Cannon Restock perk from the Artisan Workshop is super crucial here to keep aggro with all of the Ripper Demons. And we'll talk about that a little later in the method. But you can get that by doing some smithing activity inside of the Ar Artisan Workshop, gaining some respect, using the respect to buy the perk. Now while doing this method, you're going to be looking at about 160 million GP per hour. I'm going to explain that later on in this video. With that being said, you're also going to be looking at about 400,000 XP per hour for your constitution. And if you're using necromancy, you're also going to look at about 1.1 million XP per hour for that, which is insane. As for the inventory and gear, this gear setup is meant to be using for the animate dead spell. But if you don't have the city of some testing quest completed quite yet, we don't need the animate dead spell. It just helps with the damage reduction over time. So for the gear, we are going to be running with three pieces of the Death Warden outfit, the helm, the body, and the legs. Then we're also going to be using two pieces of Crypt Loom for the effect for the melee damage reduction. So we have that for the gloves and boots. We will be using the Inspiration Aura. So anything that helps generate any kind of adrenaline does help with this method. You can get away with vampirism, but the way the Revo Bar works, anything that helps generate with the adrenaline is going to make the Revo Bar go off a lot more. We'll get into the Revo Bar here in a second, though. Next, we do have the Zuck Cape. Anything with a high necromancy stat will go wonderful with this. After that, we do have the Blood Amulet of Fury just for the extra healing. For our ring of choice, we did go with the ring of death. And if you guys didn't know, it has an effect for every enemy killed. It has a 50% chance of regaining some adrenaline per its life points. Along with that, if you die, it does save you a little bit of time to be able to quick telly out to wars retreat or wherever you have a quick telly too. So ring of choice is pretty crucial to gain adrenaline with this method. Now I do have a grasping ruin pouch inside of the gear just because I don't have the upgraded Nexus, so that prayer bonus does go a long way. I do have tier 95 weapons, which is almost mandatory. The tier 90s could cut it for a little bit of time, but they don't help you last a very long time AFK in this. We do have the Scripture of When book along with us. That's because it's an AoE ability. You're going to have a bunch of Ripper Demons stacked up on you, so you're going to want to be able to attack them periodically with a giant AoE attack. As for the inventory, I have my Elder Overload Salves, I have some Weapon Poison++ plus 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 since they are poisonable, and I do have an Enhanced Excalibur, so if you have that, bring that along. Magic Note Paper, so you can know all your binding contracts that you collect along the way. Quorum Incense Decks, so you do more poison damage. I have my Grasp and Ruin Pouch also within my inventory for my Animate Dead and my Prism of Restoration, which I will get into just a little bit. I have my Binding Contracts, I have my Blood Reavers and the Blood Reaver Scrolls. So with the Blood Reaver, you're going to want to set the auto attack to 4, fill it with the Blood Reaver scrolls, and you're going to use your Prism of Restoration every so often when the health starts to get a little low. Now, it's not a crucial, crucial part. It just helps you stay alive within the whole time. There's times where you start getting a little low on health and you start getting worried, but then your Blood Reaver is there to help you out, even though your Reaver Bar could help you in the long run. After that, we do have our cannon and our cannon balls. We have a powder of penance. You're going to want to bring those along if you're going to try to stay for a long period of time because they do restore your prayer every time you get hit. 
Next, we do have our Nexus for all of our Necromancy Ruins. We have our Spring Cleaner. They drop a lot of Alkables. Must have. Now, you can also bring the Artificial Measure or a Jam Bag to grab all the gems if you really want to. But from what I saw, they were mainly noted, so it didn't really truly help. Charming Up. I'm not going to emphasize this enough. Bring a Charming Up or collect all the blue charms. You most likely will literally get all of your blue charms back from making your binding contracts while killing Ripper Demons. I also like to bring an Ectoplasmator just because they drop so many ashes and it helps with your prayer experience along the way if you want to collect some prayer. Or you can collect all the ashes and make a little bit more profit. That is all up to you. As for the Relic Powers, I was using the Berserker's Fury, Death Ward, and the Fury of the Small. The Fury of the Small is probably the most mandatory thing here because it helps generate your adrenaline the most. And of course, the Berserker Furies gives you more damage per health lost, and the Death Ward also helps damage reduction with more health lost as well. As for the perks on all of my gear, they're not best in slot, but they worked. So for my Soulbound Lantern, I was able to use Aftershock 4, which did more than enough damage to help me out with all of their special attacks. Now the Omni Guard, I used Eruptive 3, Ruthless 2. If you can get your hands on Eruptive 4, Ruthless 3, that is the best in slot for this method. It's just super rare. From my understanding, it's almost impossible to get. After that, we do have our Death Warden top with Enhanced Devoted Fort, which is crucial, crucial for this AFK method because that just helps negate all damage when your Deflect Melee is up. And then after that, we have Crystal Shield Fort, which I saw it help me out plenty of times during this method. For our Reaver Bar, we're going to be using Conjure Army, Spectral Scythe, Soul Strike, Blood Siphon, Soul Sap, and Sacrifice. Now we have the Spectral Scythe up in the front of the Revo Bar so we can use it as often as possible. And that's why I was saying you want stuff on your perks and or use the Inspiration Aura to be able to generate as much adrenaline as possible so we can use it every time that it is off of cooldown. Now we do have Blood Siphon in the Revo Bar so everything being bundled together, you hit Blood Siphon, it siphons everything that's around in your area and it just regenerates health for you. Along with Sacrifice at the end of the Revo Bar so every time it hits and if if it kills it does generate additional hp now before getting into the actual method first off you have to do the agonizing part of making your binding contracts now with this method i'm about to tell you you can make about 700 binding contracts in about 20 minutes so with this method all you have to do is you go to taverly you bring all of the materials you bring your pouches your blue charms your spirit shards your hellfire metal and your blood of orcus once you get over to the obelisk, there will be a trader there called Majestix. What you're going to do is you're going to take your Blood of Orcus and your Hellfire Metal, and you're going to sell little by little to the trader in the store. Now, I say little by little because for as long as your materials sit inside of the trader's store, it starts to deteriorate. So you'll notice that I have 1,400 of each Hellfire Metal and Blood of Orcus, and at the end, I only make about 682 binding contracts. So over time, it starts to dis disappear from the store. Now, we will be doing this method inside of the wilderness. As you see on the map above, you will see that I circled around where the Ripper Demons are within the wilderness. Now, since I never completed the Wilderness Achievements or never finished the Dragon King Laboratory Elite Dungeon, my method is I teleport to the Zambarakian Undercity, I run over to the chest, and I teleport to the Dragon King Laboratory. But if you guys have finished either one of those, you can easily use the Wilderness Sword. You can go to the farming spot that's out in the middle of it, run north, then run west, and you'll get to your spot. Or you can just teleport straight to the Dragon King Laboratory, and then you just run around into the wilderness, run past the greater demons, and then you'll get into the spot that I'm going to talk about in a second. So currently I am standing in the spot just south of them to where the Ripper Demons cannot attack. In this spot, this is where you get everything ready. Your Quorum Incense decks, your Weapon Poison, your Elder Overload selves. You turn on your Aura, you turn on your God Book, and then you eat one of your powder appendances if that's what you do with them. You summon your Blood Reaver, you fill it with scrolls, you make sure that the... Auto attack is set to 4, then you hit your animate dead if that's what you are using here. Now for the most complicated part, what you're going to have to do, you're going to run up to the top where you see on screen. You're going to place your dwarf cannon down, fill it with cannonballs, 
then you're just going to run south into the spot that you see me run into here. Now, what I typically do here would be a Threads of Fate, maybe a Soul Sap and a Volley of Souls followed right after it. So you can try to take out as many Ripper Demons as you possibly can before they generate enough adrenaline to use their special attack and one-shot you. Now what you can actually do is you can also deflect melee prayer on and then use devotion while running through all the ripper demons so you don't take a whole lot of damage while you're setting down the cannon and filling it with cannonballs and getting to your spot. Now don't get me wrong, this is probably the most complicated part of this method. There's going to be probably plenty of times where you die while putting down the cannon or your ring's going to proc to where you have to quick telly, which could actually work in your favor tremendously. So when your ring of death procs, I would highly recommend that you do quick telly back to wars retreat as soon as possible. Before you die and you have to spend a buttload of coins in order to gain all your stuff back and then you just run back. But why this could help you out tremendously, it's because by the time you run back with your cannon attacking all of them, their adrenaline is not gamped. So you can easily just run right into the spot that you need to be in, and then you just start attacking and gaining up all of your adrenaline along the way. Now, I still prefer to, you know, protect melee devotion so you get in your spot with almost nearly full health so everything can work out perfectly fine but you want to make sure that they don't have adrenaline when you first attack so this could be a method that you can go about go place your cannon go hit them with a threads of fate a soul sap and then a volley of souls and teleport back towards retreat then you just refill your inventory and you run right back to your spot now doing this method, you're going to want to keep an eye on your Blood Reaver's health. Use Prism of Restoration whenever you need to, along with all the other stuff. If you start running low on the Outer Overload salves, you know, sip one. If you feel like you're going to run low on a Weapon Poison plus plus plus, sip one. If your health is getting low and you're starting to feel weary about it, hit your Enhanced Excalibur. You're just going to keep an eye on everything and make sure everything is working into your favor. If not, you can perish pretty quickly while doing this method. So you want to keep an eye on everything and be on high alert, but it is an AFKable method to where you can also walk away from it when your health is full. You only want to pay attention when your health starts to get a little lower. You might have to hit devotion if you have enough adrenaline for it. If not, if you guys have the limitless ability you can use that and then you can use devotion but limitless is pretty pricey and hopefully things start to drop with the vital spark so i can get myself that ability but the main thing you want to focus on is noting all of your binding contracts if you don't do that then you're just wasting your time killing the ripper demons and then you're not making as much profit as you can with this method, you can expect to kill around 1,600 Ripper Demons. Yes, 1,600 Ripper Demons in one hour. So what I highly suggest is go and take one hour of making binding contracts. You can make 700 binding contracts in 20 minutes, so you can make 2,100 binding contracts in an hour. So you take an hour of making binding contracts, and then you take another hour of killing Ripper Demons. As for the profits, I did a five minute test and after grabbing all the binding contracts and a couple of nice little drops, I was able to get 39.9 mil within that five minutes. Now for all the expenses, which is your ruins for your animate dead and your prism of restoration spells, your blood reaver, your blood reaver scrolls, your necromancy ruins, all the materials you need for your binding contracts. After all of that, you're looking at about 28.3 million GP of profit in that five minutes so what that is telling me that is about 170 million gp per hour while doing this method with the ripper demons which is absurd for a slayer creature so if you can get past the initial part of setting up everything with your cannon getting in the right spot and making sure that there is no ripper demons in the very beginning with the full adrenaline to where they are going to use their special attack and one shot you then this method goes smoothly you just got to make sure you got to follow it you got to pay attention a little bit here and there with your blood reaver and make sure that you're noting all of your binding contracts other than that this method is a good method for anybody who wants to make a lot of money while doing combat but that does come an end to this video. If you guys found anything useful within this money-making method, make sure to hit the like button and leave a comment down below on what you learned. And if you guys have any tips on money-making methods like this for any type of video, make sure to also leave a comment for future watchers so they can also read and learn. If you guys are also new to the channel and are interested in PVMing, I do a lot of novice PVM work on here. It's just me being mediocre at bosses. 
So if you're interested in that, make sure to hit the sub button, hit the bell icon so you know when I upload next. But until next time, guys, I hope you stay safe. See ya.